MonsterVerse Godzilla, Legendary Studios Cast Cow, bringing in new fans every day, providing the kaiju community with an abundance of kaiju content, and Showa Godzilla, the one who started it all way back in 1954. He is the silly superhero version of the G-Man, whether it's teaching his son how to stand up for himself or fighting against world issues like pollution. These two Godzillas are widely considered to be the best Godzillas when it comes to battle experience and fighting skills, and there's good reason for that. When adding up the amount of kaiju they've both fought, it's a total of 39 kaiju. At least the ones I could find. I mean, that's more than the Heisei and Millennium Era combined, only having 36. Now, to those who have been here for a while, you know we do things differently. Rather than having them fight normally, we're going to have them swap fights. Firstly, if you haven't already, make sure to go see where Showa Godzilla lands in the MonsterVerse after watching this video. But today, we'll be doing the reverse. Today, we'll be asking, could Legendary Godzilla survive the Showa Era? Hello everyone, I'm Godzilla Guy, and today we'll be sending Legendary Godzilla into his third verse swap, the past ones being the Heisei Era and the Pacific Rim Universe. So, with that being said, on to your favorite part of the video. Who will he be fighting? Legendary Godzilla will be facing off against the likes of King Kong, Kumanga, Gigan, Megalon, Mechagodzilla, Hadora, and finally, King Ghidorah. Yes, I just copy-pasted the Final Wars one. So firstly, like always, we need to cover Godzilla's feats and see how he stacks up against his enemies, starting with his strength. His two best feats of this is when he's able to lift the Muto Prime onto his back. The Muto Prime weighs an eye-watering 135,000 metric tons. Now his other good feat is a couple times knocking around King Ghidorah and even throwing him. Now blink and you'll miss it kind of moment. First Ghidorah weighing 141,056 tons. So Goji with ease should be able to throw around really anyone he's about to fight. Now into his speed. While there's no given speed for him in the films, according to a test screening for Godzilla King of the Monsters, he's able to run at 306 miles an hour. Now into his durability. Firstly, he withstood his own beam, which doesn't seem like much until you really, like, look into how powerful his beam is. According to Greg Keyes, his beam is the most powerful thing in nature. But not just Earth, the entire universe. His beam should output more force than black holes and supernovas. He also took the Permian asteroid, either to the face or really close by, which is considered to be the most severe extinction event in Earth's history, wiping out around 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species. His IQ is also pretty well off being able to keep other kaiju in check, knowing when to put his ego aside, showing emotions such as distress and cockiness. His battle experience will also be a big help, in that he's kind of fought his own MonsterVerse version of all these Showa era kaiju. And yeah, if any other important stats come up, we'll cover them during his fight. So, let's dive in. First up is Kong, and yeah, Godzilla one taps. I love 1962 Kong, but Legendary Godzilla outdoes him in every category by an outrageous amount. Now, Lightning Kong would fare a little bit better, but again, Godzilla would win with ease. Now to Kumanga. A Kumanga is very overlooked in the entire Godzilla franchise, being one of the earliest kaiju to actually almost beat Godzilla, that being thanks for her venom. But her venom wouldn't really work on Legendary. Let me explain. She only output so much venom, and all the venom she put into Showa Godzilla didn't even kill him. It got close, but didn't kill him. So now there's Legendary Godzilla, who weighs almost five times more, is over twice as tall, and is also over twice as long. So the sheer amount of blood that he has in his body compared to Showa Kumanga's venom output, it, there's just not enough. So yeah, again with low difficulty, Godzilla could just beam or stomp on her and move on. Next up is the space chicken, Gigan. Now Gigan's main form of attack is his chest saw and his giant claws. Legendary Godzilla will have an issue with this, as Legendary Godzilla has shown many times that he is weaker to sharper things, such as the Muto's claws or Kong's axe. Another thing that Legendary will have to watch out for is Gigan's speed, because Gigan can fly at Mach 3, and we know he can also, to an extent, fight at this speed, as that's how he cut into Godzilla and made him bleed. But he wasn't the first one, I made a short on that, go watch it. And what Legendary Godzilla has faced off against fast enemies in the past, at the moment there's nothing in the MonsterVerse that comes close to Gigan. Now I do still see Godzilla moving on, as he could just implement what he did with the Iron Dragon, as the Iron Dragon was much too fast for him, so what he do? He grabbed onto him and kept him in place. So eventually Godzilla should be able to grab on a guy again and just hold him down and just pummel him with attacks. So with like mid difficulty, Godzilla moves on. Now onto the bug I openly cloak. Cloak. Origin. I think you know. Description. To absolutely and uncontrollably overestimate something. Anyways. Now Megalon is very strong. Being able to produce winds that can push upwards of 70,000 metric tons is also able to perform on par with Showa Godzilla's strength. And Showa Godzilla, as we know, can lift up the 91,000 metric tons Zandora. He's also able to fly and burrow at Mach 3, and swim at Mach 4. He has diamond-like skin, radar, and eyesight a hundred times out of a human. So what can Monster vs. Godzilla do? Well, not much. Now, I do still think he'd beat Megalon, just due to his sheer strength and power of his attacks. But Megalon wouldn't go down without a fight, inflicting a lot of stab wounds upon a Godzilla. Dog, that... Dude, I can't recall... Oh my god. Now, I could also see an outcome for Megalon winning, 
thanks to your speed, and he will fly around and stab Godzilla. Though, thanks to the new Godzilla X Kong TV spot, we see just how agile and fast Godzilla is, being able to not only slam into Scylla, but JUMP! HE JUMPED! We haven't seen that since Final Wars! Yeah, at his massive size, and now being able to jump around, I have to admit, my goat Megalon would probably go down. Next up is a surprise competitor, Gorosaurus. As you see here, Goro has articulation in his arms, legs, and tail. Now it's legendary Godzilla. He has articulation in his legs and arms. LOL, sponsor time. Today's video is sponsored by Beast of the East Collectibles. And listen guys, Beast of the East has sponsored quite a few of the videos now. It's the quality I'm here to promote. They have a massive selection of figures to choose from, range from Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Evangelion, Gamera, and of course, Godzilla. Today, they were kind enough to send in the movie monster series Gorosaurus and two Gameras. You can get all these toys for yourself at a very fair price. Most stores will charge up their products a lot, while Beast of the East Collectibles keeps them at almost the exact same price. Not only that, but they frequently have deals going on, so you can save even more. So while articulation is a tie, your wallet will by far be winning. Make sure to check out the first link down below to check out Beast of the East Collectibles. Thank you, Beast of the East, for sponsoring this video. And also, while you guys are down there, make sure to join the Discord. Anyway. Now onto our final wars Godzilla stopped. Mecha Godzilla. Now Mecha Godzilla is difficult due to his shield and his sheer amount of weapons he has at his disposal. Now, as we have addressed in past videos, Mecha Godzilla lives in a black hole. But also, as we've already set up, Legendary Godzilla's beams should be able to output more force than a black hole. So without Mecha's shield, his just general armor shouldn't really hold up too well. However, Legendary Godzilla could also take heavy damage from Mecha Godzilla's missiles, being able to stab into Godzilla and make him bleed profusely. But again, thanks to Godzilla's size, he should be able to knock around Mecha Godzilla with just a few swipes of his tail. So, with insane difficulty, Godzilla moves on. Now onto Hedorah. And yeah, Godzilla stops here. And while you could argue Godzilla move on thanks to his beam, I just don't know if his beam would be able to dry him all out in time. Let's say it did. Well, as he did get dried out in Godzilla vs. Hedorah, he still lived on. She is a she, I don't know. And much worse, Godzilla just isn't fast enough to keep up with Hedora if she flies away. So it'd just be an ongoing, you know, round of Hedora flying off and Godzilla trying to chase after him. So it's more of a stalemate than anything. While I would say Monster vs. Godzilla is just better at all the stats, I just don't think he has a proper way to kill Hedora without Hedora surviving. But even if we do agree Godzilla moves on, he's not beating Shova Ghidorah. Now, if it was Thermo Godzilla or God forbid Evolve, they both should pass Hedora. And Evolve should be able to pass Shova Ghidorah. But this is only base Goji. But yeah, there's your answer to Legendary Godzilla in the Showa era. I hope you all enjoyed the video. This video is a pain to make. I don't know why. It, this one was just overly difficult than the average one. I apologize if any of it seems rushed or clunky. Because it is in some aspects. Anyways, I hope you all have a great time in theater seeing Godzilla X Con. And do expect me to make some videos on the topic. So, as always, everybody, keep collecting. Godzilla Guy, out. See ya.